trying to hold up. Well, he was in the air, and 96 got him. Those kickers absorb those hits so well all the time, don't they? <laughs> well, they also, uh, most of them are in theater school. They, uh, they, they are auditioning for Oscars. Lance Thomas is the Fresno State football player that ran into the kicker, and I disagree with this call. There was nothing rough about that call at all. He ran into the kicker. That should have been a five-yard penalty. Yeah, and if it's five, it's not an automatic first down, but automatic first down on any personal foul. So Utah State gets a break. I guess you have to respect the fact that they're in a pretty vicarious position, having their leg up in the air after they, after they follow through. Aren't really able to protect themselves in their body. And they shouldn't have the rule. It should be just 15 yards anytime you hit the kicker. Again, a short game. Fresno State defensively seems to be reacting a little bit better to the football now. They're able to stop Tiger, and he could not find a hole, number 44. I think what Kevin maybe was referring to, Randy, was the fact that he was still off the ground. That, that a lot of times is the in indication. If the kicker's feet are both off the ground while he's in that vulnerable position, then they'll usually call the 15. Yeah, but Thomas was trying to hold up. He wasn't trying to go after the kicker in any way, shape, or form. So if you're going to have two rules like that, a 5 or a 15, enforce them. Here's that bootleg we were talking about. Hampton is open, coming out of the backfield, down to the 41-yard line. It's going to lull you to sleep every time they have a tight end of the game, and, and then they're in that offset eye. They run the football, fake it to the left side. You'll see Lopez here, takes off tackle. Ronnie Lopez, good touch. Third down and two. Second down and two, excuse me. Third down and two. Always go with your first thought. Was taught that in school many years Don't ago. trust the men with the chains. Third down and two for the Aggies. Inside the Bulldog 45-yard line. And they work Roger Grant. He has a first down. That's hard running from Roger Grant in the grasp of Jeff Thiessen. I'm impressed with Roger Grant. He, he's a load. Tough to handle. Second only to Tico Duckett of Michigan State coming back this year as far as ground gainers in 1990. But again, he's had an off year. A lot of it not his fault. He hasn't had too many holes to run to. 16-7, Bulldogs lead under five minutes left third quarter. First down for the Aggies at the Fresno State 36-yard line. Run! They run Roger Grant, and he stood up. Ran it to three or four of the white jersey Bulldog defenders. Stacy Wilcott tangling up inside there. Now, if you're Utah State, you don't want to get too predictable and start calling Roger Grant's number each and every time. An official's timeout for the moment. Another injury timeout. Well, we've given a lot of credit to both Ron Rivers and Lorenzo Neal about that forward lean after their hit. Let's give credit to Roger Grant as well. When he gets hit, he gets positive yardage afterwards. Injury timeout, 4.32 left third quarter. The Bulldogs 16-7 lead could be in jeopardy. The Aggies are moving downfield. <laughs> How's our feet doing? Cold, even with four pair of socks on. <laughs> Who, who's injured, can you tell us? Utah State, whoever it is. Oh, real nice. I don't want to. You got him straight now? Thanks, dude. Ed O'Banion. Yep, 318 pounder. He's okay. I'd like to see a pickoff or a fumble and go all the way. I'd feel a lot more comfortable. Now, this one's. Scary. Sixteen seven Bulldogs offensive lineman Greg O'Banion, six four, three hundred and eighteen pounds, shaken up, but he walked off the field of play under his own power. So fortunately for the Aggies, he'll be available a little bit later. Gracie Jenkins in motion. And they work Grant trying to get to the outside. Nice cut back down to the 31-yard line. We ran into Marquez Pope. 
Hope the Bulldogs' leading tackler this season, averaging 10 tackles per game. One of the things Cliff Eisel, the defensive coordinator of Fresno State, talked about that Grant got so much yardage last year on the cutback play. So you want to pursue, but you ought to also have to stay at home to a degree in case Grant cuts back. That time he did, and Marquez Pope met him head on. Marquez came flying up there from the defensive secondary. And again, one of those big third down situations, this time third and five for the Aggie. Dual receivers to the left side with Rod Moore in the slot on the left side. Out of the backfield, Hampton was wide open, but Lopez's hand was forced early by Nick Surface. Good discipline there by the Bulldogs. From the standpoint, Lopez went with a long count, tried to draw him offside. Fresno State stayed at home. They will go for it, though, on fourth down. Lopez wants to call his own play. He thinks he's got something in mind that he wants to do. like Steve Lee might have been one-on-one -on -one coverage there with Hampton and missed it. This now becomes a huge play for the Aggies on their 62nd homecoming. Bidding to make this a battle with 23rd ranked Fresno State. It's fourth and five with the Aggies down by nine. And it's incomplete. And Fresno oh. State now a late foul, a flag. One official out of five throws a flag. The out of nowhere. All recalling incomplete. <laughs> and one official throws a flag. So late. Even if it is pass interference, and we'll see if it is here, it, it came so late. The ball may, may be uncatchable. Greg, Greg Watson. The Aggies are getting some calls here. Well, you Greg Watson that away from home. is from Logan, so he's a Loganian. I think maybe one of the officials might be a Loganian also. But the good teams are going to have to fight back, and Fresno State highly regarded. Going to have to overcome a couple bad calls here. Run. Hampton surges inside the 20 yard line. Again, Stacy Wilcox cuts him down. Well, it's amazing what gentlemen in the stripes can have to do for a football game into a specific drive here. Utah State has been helped and aided by two questionable calls. To me, more questionable was the, the punting call. I just still can't get over Ridiculous. that one. Second down and four. Roger Grant. Set back about seven yards off the line of scrimmage, and this is Grant running through traffic. Down to the 15 and close to another Aggie first down. Got great quick feet. He's like, he slices and dices. It's like that Ginzu knife. Very dramatic. <laughs> Bulldogs do not want to be food for thought for this guy, Roger Grant. Oh, real good, Randy. That, that was your best one of the day. Well, you guys keep laying them out there. I got to come back occasionally. That's well, third down and very short. Less than one. Utah State in their version of the T-heavy. A little bit of a wishbone look. And Hello. It's Grant, he's met before he could do anything by Brad Bell. Great play by Brad Bell. He nearly got the handoff. He was there that quick. Combination of Bell shooting the gap and sloppy ball handling by Lopez. Well, and the Utah the Aggies are in another. Brad Bell's a 230-pound defensive lineman, so he's not very big, but he's real quick. Gets into the backfield. Aggies call a timeout. Brad Bell felt all along that it was going to be Roger Grant. And he had his zone in on Grant. Cut him down. Another big fourth down when we come back to Utah. Good call. Domino's pizza guy throwing pizzas into the audience. Probably empty boxes. With coupons. They got the kicking team coming in, don't they? I think it's smart. They got it. They do two they scores either way. Yeah. It could be the long. Doug Beach. That is like. Well, a, hey, Doug Nick. Beach is a kicker's name. You got Matt Barr. If it's Doug Beach. It may not be Beach. It could be the long kicker. Is it uh, Beach? Okay, it's Beach. Okay, because some other guy was practicing long. Very good. That's good one. Except you better hold this up because they're getting ready to or start Or if he's action. in Southern California, he changed his name to Sandy. Huh? What? Sandy Beach. He's hit a 36. No, he's trying 36 and he missed a 31. Maybe he's a son of a. Son of a. 
Watch a fake. Looks like field goal. Down by nine, Utah State will attempt a three-pointer from 36 yards from Doug Beach. Now, earlier today, he missed one from 31. It's good. A 36-yard field goal for Doug Beach that carves the Bulldog advantage. Now, it's only a six-point game. It's 16-10. He's one of the quickest kickers I've ever seen. He really has a lot of trust in his holder and his snapper. He gets the ball off real quick and high. Ooh. You know something? When I was down on the field before the game, as you know that they shrunk the crossbar, the, the goalpost this year in college football, the goalposts at Utah State, as they go up, they go out. Really? That so ball there's about like a six, the six inch deviance on the outside. Hmm. That ball looked to you like it hit the post? Oh, it, it hit definitely the post. Hit the post. Yeah. Okay. That ball was not good in Fresno, where the goalposts are straight. Four feet, 10 inches narrower this year. Hadn't affected Derek Mahoney so far. He's seven and eight this year. And Sean Jones with the stronger leg will now kick off. Well, the Aggies have to feel pretty good about themselves. One big play. To, uh, you preach as a coach, one big play and you can win the game. Still a long way to go. A minute 51 remains in the third quarter. And the Bulldogs lead by 16-10. Each side with a three-pointer in this third quarter. Means from the goal line. Out to the 24-yard line. Never looked like he really got in the track and in the sink how fast he was running. One thing about that turf is it not only is it grass long, it's a little soggy now. Maybe Kelvin being a little tentative, making sure he's not slipping. And he might have been looking for that one opening to accelerate and really didn't find it. Bulldogs trying to go 8-0 this year, 4-0 in the conference. If they win today, they would move into a first-place tie. They're bundled up. Remember, these fans came into the Romney Stadium, and they knew it was 20 degrees earlier today. It's a pass to Seabrook, and he's knocked off his pins by Israel Bird just outside the 30-yard line. Now, that win today, if the Bulldogs could hold on, would give them a 4-0 conference record, the same as San Jose State. And keep in mind, the Spartans play later tonight against UNLV. Malcolm Sebrin started out the year well, and then went four games where he only caught one ball, but then last week had a big week against UNLV. Five catches, 76 yards. Sweep left with the run zone kneel. I can stand to be correct, but it is my understanding that if Fresno State was to lose a football game, that if they had only one loss going into that San Jose game and beat San Jose, they would be the conference champion and would represent the Big West and the California Bowl. That is correct. Spartans went last year, so if they end up in a tie, it would be the Bulldogs' turn to go. But they've got a lot more riding on Fresno State football does than just trying to win the conference championship with the national rankings. Third and short, sweep near side. Oh, fumble. And this one's picked off in the air by Smith, and he's going to go all the way. That ball, I think, hit, in the, gr hit the ground. Well, as long as he had positive yardage, if it was beyond the line of scrimmage, then you can pick up the ball and go. If it's not, then the ball comes back, and the official, what, is calling it a touchdown. Well, Lorenzo Neal, usually a sure-handed ball carrier for Fresno State. Talked about it's a precious commodity. You can't turn it over. Here it hits the ground. I'm sure that that ball cannot be advanced by defense. If it's a blocked punt, it can. Took one convenient hop, and Damon Smith, with the long strides, glides in. And now a PAT will give Utah State the lead. We're even at 16. Just talked about one big play. The Aggies just got it. Doug Beach indeed gives the Aggies a 17-16 advantage with only 28 seconds left in the third quarter. Remember, the Fresno State Bulldogs have been behind on the road before at Oregon State, at Washington State, at New Mexico State, and again here at Utah State. Let's take a look. This one bounced into the hands of Damon Smith. Well, again, the rule states if, it, if the ball is fumbled beyond the neutral zone, in other words, beyond the line of scrimmage, you can pick it up. If this would have been deemed behind the line of scrimmage, 
then you can only fall on it. But the new rule in college football, if it's beyond the neutral zone, you can pick it up and return it. On any kick, you can return it. Kick return if a guy fumbles. Well, Chuck Shelton well, that resigned last week after the loss to Long Beach State. And he knows this game would make his season for Jim Sweeney. They want to be undefeated. They want the ranking. And there is a danger zone, a warning going out now. They knew coming into Logan it wouldn't be easy. Well, the dog showed great character at Oregon State and Washington State. And New Mexico State. They, they really did. There. So this is not a new experience for them. They can have to suck it up and see what they can do in the fourth quarter. 28 seconds to go here in the third. That score obviously got this homecoming crowd of 9,814 into this game. That will be Kelvin Means again from the three. And he's out to the 25-yard line. And again, this will be a test for Trent Dilfer. And normally he has passed these tests with flying colors. But now he will see a charged up defensive team from Utah State after the touchdown on the turnover. Chuck Shelton, 22, 39 and one, highly disappointed. That's why he resigned. Just didn't feel he was getting the job done. From the 25 yard line. Ron Rivers carries the football for just a few. And they converge in a hurry, led by Del Lyles, number 49, that active linebacker. Momentum. Big swing of pendulum swing here at the end of the third quarter. It's going to be a great fourth quarter football game. Well, the third quarter is in the books. And a fumble recovery, and it was taken in by Damon Smith, the free safety. And that has given Utah State the lead. It's a scant lead of 17-16. The Bulldogs will have to rally in the final quarter. Who struck them? Play it back. Timeout. Can we can we see who can we see that fumble in the timeout back? Yeah. We're gonna play it back right now. We want to see who stripped them loose so Smith. Yeah, that was a good call. No, I mean it was a good call from the Dale Lyles. Lyles. I'm playing one more time. Can you do it one more time? No. But. It doesn't matter anymore. Oh, Sam. Welcome back. This is the fourth quarter. I'm Randy Rosenblum with Dave Campbell and Kevin Sweeney. Frigid temperatures in Logan, Utah. And the heat is now on the Bulldogs down by a point. Damon Smith returning a fumble to Lorenzo Neal for a touchdown to give Utah State the lead. And Neal cannot get outside. A very much fired up Aggie group of defenders running to the football. One of the main keys, Utah State defense is fired up there in the game. They have an opportunity to have a big upset. Bulldog off, Bulldogs offensively have to remain poised, keep their composure, and execute like they've done all football, the whole football game. The nose guard, Mark Johnson, disrupted that play. It is third down from the 25 and 10 to go for Trent Dilfer. Bulldogs have been great all year on third down conversions, and they need a big one here. No. Forced that one into coverage, and it was nearly intercepted, intended for Marty Thompson. That's a case of Trent Dilfer, so confident with that strong arm, much like a Dan Marino, just trying to force it through the traffic, and he's lucky that one wasn't intercepted. Well, he's going to learn with experience. It's a difficult situation to be, at, whether you're a freshman or a 13-year veteran playing the NFL, third down and 10 is a tough situation to be in there. He tried to squeeze the ball in, not enough room to Marty Thompson. Brad Siegel will punt it away. Floyd Foreman from his 36-yard line. Not a 
lot of running room. As the Bulldogs on specialty coverage, got a nice play from Jeff Arnold, the reserve tight end. 14 minutes and one second left. Logan, Utah. Utah State is leading by one. Interesting, I said one big play. I talked to Don Carey for 45 minutes. I talked, I talked to Don Carey for 45 minutes on the phone. I just went over some rules with him. Does that help? Yeah. Used to be you couldn't advance. They're going to pound the ball with Roger Grant. They're going to stop Grant now. They can stop him. I'm not worried about that. It's those fluke plays. Damon Smith returned a fumble by Lorenzo Neal, 37 yards for a touchdown late in the third quarter. And that gave Utah State a 17-16 lead, and they cling to that advantage with 14 minutes, one second left. And they start from their 43-yard line, so the Bulldog defense is going to have to rise to the occasion. Lopez is throwing, and Jenkins is wide open. First down to the Fresno State 42-yard line. Just a great pattern by Tracy Jenkins. Looked like the dogs had it covered. He faked in, faked out, and all of a sudden Lopez delivered the ball on time. Fresno State did everything right, but two great athletes made the play. Randy, you talked about having to stop the running game. They've got to get a, more of a pass rush on Ronnie Lopez. He's a big, strong kid. Long time, long time to cover. On, Mr. D. Jenkins from Tulare. 42 yard line. Aggies in control with Roger Grant. Judd Grant Fole. ran into Judd Fole, number 92. And he had help from Zach Rick. So that defensive line did the job. The Pacific Bell, Smart Yellow Pages, third quarter stats. First down, still all Fresno State. But the turnover, that second turnover, the biggest stat. Total yardage, Bulldogs almost two to one, but they don't pay off in total yards. Fresno State's defense has to do the job here and get the offense the ball back. Approaching 13 minutes left. Yeah, they moved on the line, didn't clear the call. Roger Grant slices down to the 40 and perhaps the 39. Let's see where they'll spot his forward progress. Number 65, Charlie Smith, the right guard, moved, started to pull out of his stance, and the officials did not throw the flag. He didn't move much, but he moved. He did that Melvin Johnson move, and yeah. Melvin did in the first half. Melvin got nailed. You want to throw a flag down from the press box for him. <laughs> 12 and a half minutes left as the Aggies a little bit more deliberate coming out of that huddle, knowing they have a 17-16 lead. See if the dogs blitz here, third and long. Trips to the right side, three wide receiver. Intercepted, Braxton. And he's finally hauled down. Emery Braxton with a critical interception for Fresno State. Dropped by Warren Bowers, the center. Really a big play. Hopefully this will have an opportunity to swing the pendulum to the Fresno State in terms of momentum. Ronnie Lopez tried to force the ball in. Emery Braxton, now you want to change the possession here. The people got to move and start blocking for you. That didn't happen for him. Like Emory had a chance to get to the outside, ran into one of his own men. Jeff Beeson. Now the crowd hollering for the defense. Dilfer will throw on first down. He's pressured. Unloads the safety valve. And he did a good job to find a, not the primary target. He found Ron Rivers, who had circled out of the backfield. Just a great job we talked about in the first half a little bit, Trent. Wanting to make that big play, throwing it downfield. There, wasn't there, dumped the ball off to Ronnie Rivers, makes six, seven yards. Mark Barsotti was talking last week to Dilfer in between the first and second period. He said he was locking on his primary too much. He said, read the coverage. That time Dilfer did previous play to Marty Thompson. He locked on Thompson too long. 
Ron Rivers again, cutting up field, 45, 50, and a Bulldog first down. Keep in mind, there are only four undefeated, untied Division I teams in the country. And they Florida are State, one, Miami, two, and Washington. Three. And, and the other one is Fresno State. And the Bulldogs would like to keep it going. They're trailing by one. Braxton's interception has given them renewed life, rekindled the fire. Wide of the target. Dilfer slipped as he released the ball. Wanted Titus Winan. This is a Titus Winan. Winans is a freshman receiver trying to throw the post corner. It takes a lot of timing and practice to get this thing done right and correctly. Just didn't hook up there. Let's see if maybe the dogs go to that fake draw and quick screen. That's been a favorite player of theirs on first and ten and second and ten. It's been a play that's worked three out of four times they've run it today. Second down and ten. This is a run. Run all the way for Lorenzo Neal. He twists and fights down the 46-yard line. The tackle by Greg Davis. Yeah, Donald Toomer also stayed at home. The uh, Aggies had a blitz on. Bulldogs got outside that, but Donald Toomer stayed in. He made a good play. 81 yards rushing for Neal. Bulldog touchdown. The only TD they have today. The Fresno State is looking at a big third down play. It is third and six. The ball. 46-yard line of Utah State. 17-16 Aggies. He's got the first down if they give him a good spot. Well, it went to Marty Thompson, and it's very close. I'm not sure that he did get to the first down stick. And Del Lyle's slow to get up. You're going to see Lorenzo Neal sneak out of the backfield here, and he's going to be wide open standing right there by himself. Trent's got all that confidence and that strong arm. Seems to me that he, real tough call there. Marty's trying to fight to get across the 40-yard 40 40 line. Yeah, they say it's fourth down, so look for a full house backfield. Here comes Berg and Daigle. Let's see who they give it to. Last time they had Daigle bottled up, but he made it on his own. The last time they were in it, Lorenzo was the fumble that Lorenzo had. Dogs need a timeout here. Extra tight end. Ooh, got it. Just slid through the traffic at the line of scrimmage for an apparent first down for Anthony Daigle. Dogs only had ten men on the field. All of a sudden, one man came rushing on. The clock was winding down. Down about five done. seconds. One of the things about that uh, about that formation is you get them out of the huddle, you get them down, and you get them off. It's it's a quick count scheme. You don't want to have Cadence guys trying to jump off sides or anything. Get them out, get them off. Daigle got two yards, got the first down of the Bulldogs. Start from the 39 once again with a fresh set of down. In the flat to James Allison. 40, 35, running hard to the 30 in the fresh back. Just tripped up by Israel Bird as he was breaking into the clear. So close to being a big play, Dave. You've, you've talked about this play all the whole game. It's been the biggest offensive play for the dogs. Ronnie Collins has been leading out. That time they ran it to the right side, so they had Jesse Hartman out throwing the key block, and they've gotten that key block right at the point of attack. Once that ball's received, you have to get the cornerback out of there, and they've done that. They want to reset the 25-second clock. So Great job by James Allison. Coming in, cold body, cold legs. By the way, that looked Making like a that big play. Yeah, it looked like a lateral too. That ball was thrown backwards. Sometimes you worry about that on that particular pass. Second down and a yard to go. If Dilfer goes up top and goes for the touchdown. Nope. We'll give it to Ron Rivers. And he has a first down to the 25-yard line. Well, the Bulldogs are in field goal range, but they'd like to punch it in. Remember, they're trailing by one. 842 left. The clock stops for the moment as they'll move the chains. Well, Fresno State had great character building drives against both Oregon State and Washington State in the fourth.